Um, our campaign is backed by all sorts of different organisations and individuals from a whole range of backgrounds. Um, specific bodies involved include the um, Scottish Parent Teacher Council, uh, School House, who represent homeschoolers and are represented tonight by Alison, there in the front here. Uh, Care for Scotland, represented by Gordon, who's here as well and was on the video. Uh, the Times Trust, of course, represented by Leslie, and my own organisation, uh, the Christian Institute. And I guess the aim of our campaign is to raise awareness because, as one or two speakers have already said, it's our conviction that an awful lot of parents still don't really know and understand what this new law is all about. And we're convinced that there will be, and it already is, widespread public anger when people see just what the implications of this legislation are. There's all sorts of reasons why, why I guess people are unhappy with this. Our campaign focuses on several core reasons. One, of course, is that it undermines families. It does that by definition, simply having this uh, state-employed named person. And a good quote from no less a source than the Faculty of Advocates, they say, by making indiscriminate provision for possible interference in the lives of all children, Rather than providing for focused intervention when the need arises, the bill risks enshrining a structure that has the potential to be used to undermine families. And that's very wise words. And indeed, uh, only uh, this month, a controversial child well-being survey linked to the Evidence to Success survey, piloted in Perth and Kinross, which I think Leslie spoke about, um, surfaced down in North Ayrshire, and subsequently faced the wrath of uh, local people down there. And uh, I'll read a quote from the Daily Record where it says that North Ayrshire Council hired men from a firm in Birmingham to carry out the study as part of a Scottish government-backed project to understand the health needs of kids. And uh, the North Ayrshire Council website now says researchers have been visiting homes in the area to invite parents to take part in the survey the survey has now been halted to allow a review of the research company's interview procedures. And according to the company behind it, called Dartington, um, similar door-to-door -door surveys of parents and, and children of, of parents of children under nine uh, are taking place in Angus and here in Dundee as we speak between August and October, and there may be people here who know more about that th than I do. And there's also school-based surveys too, between P5 and S4, and those are scheduled for next month. Second reason, of course, again, this has been touched on, is the terrible waste of resources. It's inevitable that by stretching resources to police the well-being of all children in Scotland, that attention will be shifted away from genuine cases of child neglect or abuse. Uh, shifting the focus from the welfare of vulnerable children, which we all want, of course, to see, to the well-being of everyone, risks swamping the system and making it totally ineffective. And that's what happened in the Isle of Man, incidentally, where a similar scheme was launched a few years ago. And there is particular concern that teachers, as Liz was saying, who will account for the vast majority of named persons are being asked to take on this huge new responsibility without any obvious extra resource being provided. Um, a third reason is that by, by granting the named person these sweeping legal responsibilities to monitor the well-being of every single child, there's a huge danger that families will be needlessly targeted and find themselves embroiled in the system because a named person takes issue with a particular parent. And you've seen examples of that in the video already. Uh, families who authorities might think are you know, so-called unconventional because they home educate their kids or because they have particularly strong religious views may be singled out for investigation. And to use an extreme but still valid example, we all remember what happened in Orkney in the early 1990s, which shows what can happen worst case scenario when the authorities get things terribly wrong. And the final reason, I guess, that we're all agreed on is that the policy is probably illegal, that it breaches the European Convention of Human Rights um, in terms of privacy and family life, and I'll come back to that in a minute. It's very important to say, 
on behalf of all of us involved in this campaign, that what we're not saying is there's not a place for a robust and very effective child protection system. Of course there is. We're also not questioning the entirely honourable motives of the vast majority of professionals in the field, and some of you may be here tonight, who do a thoroughly good job. What we are all saying is that a universal name person system is absolutely not the way to proceed and is open to widespread abuse. And I think we can summarise the reason for our campaign in this quote from the Scottish Parent Teacher Council, who say the concept of a named person for every child is ill thought through and offers no benefit to the majority of children whose named person is already in place, their parent or carer. This proposal completely fails to recognise that significant relationship and effectively seeks to assert the role of the parent. <coughs> now, as Liz explained, because the Children and Young People Scotland Act has already cleared the Scottish Parliament, the only way really to stop this now is in the courts. And for this reason, the organisation I work for, the Christian Institute, is leading others in a judicial review in the Scottish courts in an effort to reverse or at least lessen the impact of the universal named person scheme. It's not been taken lightly and follows a robust legal opinion from Aidan O'Neill QC, and there's copies of it, but we're here on the, on the table there, the white booklet at the front. And he believes very strongly that the named person policy may well be unlawful under Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights. And I'll, I'll just quote from what he says, because this is a, an expert. He says, what is startling about the proposed legislative scheme, now actual legislative scheme, for a named person service is that it appears to be predicated on the idea that the proper primary relationship that children will have for their well-being and development, nurturing and education is with the state rather than with their families and parents. I consider that the provisions of the bill which would require the appointment of a named person to every child in Scotland without exception may not be lawful on the basis that the blanket nature of this provision constitutes a disproportionate and unjustified interference with the right to respect for individual families, private and family life and home. <coughs> and then perhaps most worryingly of all, he goes on to say this, that there's a lack of proper protection against the possible arbitrary and oppressive use of the powers which would be accorded to state bodies such as the nominated person. So the legal papers were lodged at the Court of Session on the 9th of July. It was well covered on TV, some of you may have seen that, and the case is due to be heard later in the year. So finally, how, how can you help? Well, five things I'm going to mention very, very briefly. Campaigning, we're very, very keen just to get the message out there that as many people as possible hear about the campaign, hear about the policy, and sign up to support us. And this red leaflet here, there's lots of copies on the table. Please take as many away with you as you'd like. Hand them out to people you know. And encourage people to sign up as supporters on our website. And please do that if you haven't already. Um, second way you can help, of course, is funding. Um, the campaign is wholly reliant on funds from our various um, organisations who are supporting us. Uh, of course, the bulk of it is required for the judicial review itself, which could be a very expensive process. So if you are in a position to contribute, there are um, envelopes over there, and please do speak to one of us. Um, a third way you can help is to get in touch with your MSP. Now, of course, as we've all said, it's already cleared Parliament, but it's still worth speaking to them, particularly if you happen to be represented by a Scottish Government minister. And I, can, I know there's at least one or two here in Dundee. Um, because we're still with hope that they might be open to persuasion, that they could lessen the impact of this legislation when it comes to introducing the supplementary guidance. So it's very important that MSPs, especially ministers, see how angry their constituents are. Uh, fourthly, you could engage with the media. It's well known, of course, that uh, letters pages in the local media are very well read, so please do consider um, maybe writing a letter on this subject. Um, to one of your local or regional papers, outlining your concerns. 
uh, please also listen for the subject being discussed on uh, radio phone-ins. That's how Anne Cannon, who you saw in the video, got involved, for example, because she was so angry when she heard this being talked about by people on the radio. She stopped her car, phoned in, and that's now part of the campaign. Uh, whichever um, forum you're engaging with, please stick to the core message. And we do have these quite helpful engaging with the media handouts. And there's plenty of those on the table, so please take one with you tonight. Lastly, and maybe most importantly of all, there might be people here who've had experiences such as those outlined by parents in the video, especially in areas where the named person is being piloted either by councils or health boards. If you have been, please speak to one of us. We'd be delighted to hear more about it and, um, and that would be helpful to us. So that's all I've got to say. I'm really grateful that you've all come out tonight. It's a huge encouragement to all of us who are involved in the campaign and we look forward to your questions. Thank you.